And yes, yes, we, we do need more professionals. So to do this, they must uh, study a lot. And we actually, Wheelchair Rugby and other companies must put in the market the proper tools, you know, mm -hmm. for these people. Otherwise, okay, I want to work with Future Rugby and, and now, what right. can I do? So they, they must have options. <laughs> Hi everyone and welcome back to the Sporting Gold Podcast and today I'm here with Jose and Ricardo. We're actually having two guests today, you know, it's going to be great and first of all, thanks to both of you for taking the time and for being here with us today. It's a pleasure having you here. My pleasure. Thank you all for the invitation. It's a pleasure to stay here with, with you and with everybody listening and watch us. Absolutely. No, it's going to be great. We're going to dive into both your uh, journey in the sport industry, a little bit about, you know, the Brazilian Rugby Wheelchair Association as well. What are, what are some of the cool things that are happening there? And then, of course, we need to talk a little about the Sporting Global Academy course that we built together, you know, which is going to be great. Uh, you know, people can already access that and, and, and learn a lot about what you guys are doing. But before that, you know, why don't we why don't we jump into kind of just learning a little bit about your journey in the sport industry and and how it all uh, started and and Jose, why don't why don't you start first and just talk a little about your journey in the sport industry and how it began? Uh, I, I'm uh, Jose Gino in Portuguese, yes, and I start play wheelchair rugby in 2010. Um, in 2002, I have. 2002, I have a, 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 an, an accident. I will gonna dive in on the sea and mm. broke my neck. Wow. And since 2002, I stay in in in, in a wheelchair. I'm a quadriple quadriplegic, and wow. I meet the wheelchair rugby in 2010 here in my city, Brasilia. The, the capital of Brazil. And when I start playing, I love this sport because I have too much contact. Uh, it's a collective sport. We play together. And I remember too much, too much, uh, too much time when I play football. And I love it. I love it in the first, in the first practice. <laughs> and I start to play 2010. Uh, play the national championship in the same year here in Brasilia uh, and I have an opportunity to go to the national team in 2010 the end of the year I go to Mexico and since since, since then I I uh, improve my training improve my practice and stay in the national team until 2022 until this year because uh, in 2022 i i i do a new step for for me car career i i still playing but now uh, i'm president from the uh, national association the brazilian was uh, wheelchair rugby association and this is uh, a new step for me because I need to organize all the, the modality here in Brazil. Right. I need to think about everything, about the tournament, about national team, about education, about too much things. And this is a big step for, for me, like a person, to, to do right. this. Yeah. No, but it's, uh, you know, you're, you're just going from like the athlete mind, you know, the athlete mindset to like, now you're, you know, the, the president, you have to run a lot of different things, but it's a, it's a great story. And I'm glad you also, you know, found, you know, wheelchair rugby, you know, as, as a way to kind of, you know, be involved in sports and all, of course, all the steps you, you're taking in that. And, and Ricardo, well, what about you? Talk a little about your, your story as well. Okay. Uh, Different from José, 
I am a terrible player, you know. <laughs> uh, I am also a wheelchair user. I had a spinal cord injury back in 1998, mm. uh, driving my car. Um, and I am eligible for wheelchair rugby. And I, I used to play wheelchair rugby, but uh, I was focused on my university career. I am a PhD. I had a, a, I, I took a PhD in sports science. Nice. And yes, and I I spent my life studying about uh, exercise, exercise physiology, and people with spinal cord injuries. So um, I fo focused on my researcher career and lecture career. And also, I was the physiologist of Brazilian team, I guess, in 2000, 2012, if I'm not wrong. Right. And anyway, and then after Jose got his, um, his position as the new president, he invited me to, to help him as a... a uh, high performance manager of the Brazilian team and yeah I like José, he's a great guy <laughs> he's, he has a great story and even though, even though he doesn't like me as a player, I can help him anyway <laughs> that's great, and I mean like hey there you go, you know, it's all about people at the end of the day, you know yeah. that, that's what it comes down to and it's, it's, it's some great stories and and I want, you know, and, and it, like, again, since, since we're kind of like having both of you here, uh, you know, feel free to kind of both jump in in the next one here that, um, you know, talk a little bit more about the Brazilian Wheelchair Rugby Association. Like, what is the key purpose behind it? Uh, a little bit about the, the history, I guess, behind the, uh, the, the association. Yeah, uh, the wheelchair rugby born in the world, like in nine, 1977, like this in, in Canada. Mm. And after go to US, go to Europe and uh, and expand it for, for the world. And in 2010, 2000 in, at Sydney, uh, have the first uh, competition Paralympic competition for wheelchair rugby it starts in 2000 Sydney, and since since then, uh, wheelchair rugby uh, stay in the Paralympic Games, and in Brazil we we start playing in 2008. Uh, if you still have it too much gap uh, in 1970 to 2008 and. Uh, uh, all the world knows how to play wheelchair rugby. And we we start learning in 2008 because in 2016 we were gonna be the real 2016, right. and right. and Brazil have a, a spot to to play in Rio. Mm. Uh, and the program start to improve the rugby in, in wheelchair rugby in Brazil to to play a competition game in Rio 2016 and it start with two teams uh, only Rio and Sao Paulo Rio de Janeiro and Sao Paulo and grow up to another states in Brazil now we have uh, 11 club teams in Sao Paulo Brasilia Rio de Janeiro uh, Espírito Santo Par Paraná Minas Gerais and, and São Paulo in wow. six, five, six states. And now we grow up to a nor, Nordest. How do you say Nordest? Northeast. Northeast. Uh, yeah. In João Pessoa and Recife, we start a grow up uh, uh, in Brazil because Brazil have a Big, big is it's a big country. Have twenty seven states, mm. and we need to grow up in Brazil, and and so uh, wheelchair rugby. Now we 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 play. We was play 
the first world world will will champion world championship from from wheelchair rugby we play in October and in violin Denmark it was a big big stage for us we play one Paralympic Games real because we are uh we we are a host country yeah, yeah. and now we we con we go to the our first world world championship and now we have we want to go in every big tournament we have opportunity and awesome. the next one will be Paris 2024 and we we're gonna fight for this sport and and go to this tournament Ricardo do you wanna complete with something yeah I think you said everything uh, I just would like to say that Brazil has a huge potential, you know. We are, as, as José said, uh, Brazil is a, um, a huge country. We had a lot of people and we have great, great mind yeah. uh, that can work together for improving wheelchair rugby in Brazil. So uh, we had a long way to go, but still we are on track. Oh, that's that, that's great, and I mean, like obviously, it's a it's a, it's a journey. It's a process. Of course, you you started, you know, uh, yeah, it's it's barely you know over ten years, you know. So it's uh, it's still very young, and it's cool to see you know all the things that are happening, and and hopefully you will be able to 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 compete in in Paris as well. That would be that would be great. I know it's uh, it's a process getting there, but I'm sure you will be able to do so. Um, so, Ricardo, since we kind of like ended up with uh, you here, I wanted to kind of ask you a little bit about, uh, obviously, you're the manager of high performance sports. So talk a little bit about like some of the challenges with wheelchair rugby when it comes to creating, you know, kind of like the high performance culture and kind of like, you know, showing this as the potential that you're talking about, you know, in, in the Brazilian market. Uh, yes, I think the the word challenge you say it's interesting because uh, sometimes uh, we, we are in a in a fine line, you know, between uh, uh, disabled people and mm. high performance and athletes. Right. Sometimes they 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 mix the. the, the the, the role of, of these two things, you know. Yeah. Okay, I am a disabled person, and I need I need some help to do this kind of thing. I need some help to travel. But on the on the other hand, you are a high performance player. Right. Right. So um, I think the motto of the World Championship was: We are not here to inspire. We are here to win. Mm -hmm. So I think that was an excellent thing. And that's, I think, the main challenge to put into the heads of, of some players, you know? Right. Like you are a high performance player. You had to do your you had to do your best. You have to make your best. So we are here to win and not to inspire. Or you know, I think that's the main thing, the main point you have to work mm. uh, in, in, in some people. But as I said, we have great people, we have great professionals here in the area of psychology, uh, exercise, physiology, and medicine, and This kind of ability to change this kind of culture, as you said. So I I think um, we must go slowly, understanding the, the way people think, and then it, uh, putting the go. I think we can go very high. Absolutely, no. It's 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 like you said. It was. Uh... It, it, it's a journey, you know, it's a process, it's, it's learning, you know, kind of, uh, and educating in a cell, in a sense too, right. About like what it actually requires to, to perform at the, 
the highest level. And I guess that's kind of like where your, your role comes into place. Right. And kind of like expressing that and showing that. And, and for you, for you, Jose, uh, you know, obviously as the president, talk a little bit about, you know, uh, some of the responsibilities, some of the tasks that you're having and, and, and I guess perhaps focusing on even more at, at this stage. Yes. Uh, when I decide to, to to conquer uh, a president because it's an election uh, we have an election yep. uh, every four years he in Brazil right. to to the national association I think uh, I think to to use my athlete experience uh, everything I I was watching when I go to athlete and use my vision to grow up the modality because like I say, wheelchair rugby, it's uh, uh, like a child here in Brazil have 14 years yeah. now. And is that teenager, yes. <laughs> and we need to, to grow up to, to, to go to, uh, uh, to do a better things and to, to help more people to change our mind, like Ricardo say, right. because we are we are uh, high performance uh, sports, and in this uh, in these uh, first months, uh, I I was a president. I need to learn too much things about go govern government regulations because we have a a public funds, uh, government funds, and we need to respect too much rules, too much bureaucracy, and learn how to use that, and how we can use to uh, improve to do a more tournaments. In this year, we start a new tournaments. We have uh, five, five, uh, five, five national tournaments organization fight for the ABRC from the for the uh, national association yep. in the next month we're gonna be the last one in the year uh, and we help the associations the club teams to organize something because we need to play to play more more and more and, and more uh only with too much tournaments competitions friendlies or something like that right. we we can grow up more and more and more and it's it's a big challenge for for me and everybody come with me and have Mateus Campan is a vice president and Vicente is a vice vice president too it's our our life big challenge you know at the most big challenge challenge we have in our lives <laughs> well, i can't I, I can't imagine and as you were saying like it's uh it, it's still a very young you know a child or teen as you as you call it you know and this is this is important to to have in mind as well you know that you know it takes time you know to build the infrastructure, the, the 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 governance, you know, all these elements that are very critical. And as you say, you need to kind of learn and, and build as you go, you know. So this is extremely important. But but as you both were talking about, obviously there's there's great opportunities, you know, in in the sport, in you know the association itself, and and talk a little bit about you know, and both of you can kind of jump in here. Uh, what are some great opportunities for future industry professional to explore in in the wheelchair rugby and industry? And talk a little bit about you know uh, the course that we built together at the Sporting Global Academy and sort of like what this course is is going to help uh, teach those that are are interested in taking this course. Yeah, that's a very interesting point. Very interesting point because that's a discussion that José and I um, are conducting like for months. You know that we need more people, more qualified people in our area, in wheelchair rugby area. 
So we need more head coaches, we need more exercise physiologists in this area, in wheelchair rugby area, yep. and psychologists, and you know, all those professionals uh, we need. <laughs> so we are searching these guys. And of course, uh, they need uh, some fundamentals, they need some course that they should do. And I think here in Brazil, we still, we don't have much option about this, you know? Right. So the initiative of new course, new workshops for those people, for uh, people who want to work with future rugby, uh, they need to do so. Uh, we are trying to, you know, to understand these needs of the population, of the market. Yeah. And yes, yes, we, we do need more professionals. So to do this, they must uh, study a lot. And we actually, Mutual Rugby and other companies must put in the market the proper tools, you know, mm -hmm. for these people. Otherwise, Okay, I want to work with Future Rugby and, and now, what right. can I do? So they, they must have options, you know, to, to start their career. And uh, I can assure you, we need these people. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. It's a lot of potential in this industry. I don't know, Jose, if you want to add, add something as well. Yeah, in Brazil, we have too much professionals, not, not only in wheelchair rugby, but in Paralympic sports. We need uh, to, to have more professionals in every area, like, like uh, Ricardo said, and have physiotherapy, uh, health, health uh, cares, and staffs, and like uh wheelchair mechanical we have it a a big a big options for every prof professionals mm -hmm. uh, and in brazil we have a a, a big uh, we have a a big we have too much sports uh, Paralympic sports practice here we have a, a big program we have a Brazilian uh, Paralympic committee to grow up the Paralympic sports and about wheelchair rugby and the this course we of uh, we offer here in Sporting Global is too much important to be a start for this professional want to work with uh, wheelchair rugby or Paralympic sport to understand about disability because we we don't we don't want uh, people to to take care of us or see us like uh, oh this is a this is a wheelchair guy he have a too much problem no we want to see us like athletes like a, a professionals and in this course we we talk too much about this about visions about uh, about disability, we talk about uh, our history in Brazil, the history of sports in the world, and about spinal spinal cord injury because the most athletes in in wheelchair rugby it's about uh, it's because it's a spinal cord injury and this this course is a very big start for every professional want to work. And wheelchair rugby or Paralympic sports. Yeah, and I think... yeah, just, just to just to say a little uh, word, sorry. No, no, no. Uh, <laughs> you know, I've been studying about uh, physiology of spinal cord injury people like for for forever. Uh, you know, uh, the uh, exercise physiology per se, uh, it's a, a a very complex discipline. And when you, when you add uh, exercise physiology and spinal cord injury, it's a very complex stuff. 
and we we of course we need more qualified professionals and that's why we need very specific kind of courses and that, that's why it's so complex to get good professionals in this area yeah no it makes i mean like it makes sense but i think also uh you know for us you know jose was talking about too in terms of uh obviously you know I on I I know that you guys need more people, you know, in the organization and and for obviously the industry to grow. But I think it's important too is that you know I I know a lot of young students and professionals they have like this dream they want to work in the Olympics, right, and Paralympics and all this. And so even even for those that kind of have that goal of oh I want to work in the Olympics, Paralympics you know, take this course as a way of learning, you know, what wheelchair rugby is all about. It's part of the Paralympics and understanding what this sport, what is required there. You're going to do a much better job, right? At the end of the day, I'm mean, like, I think it's important that you try to soak in as much information as you can. And, and perhaps that also leads you to like, oh, now I'm much more qualified because I've taken this course that I can, you know, join, you know, perhaps wheelchair, wheelchair rugby association with you guys or maybe, maybe any other, you know, wheelchair rugby association as well. And maybe a club, you know, and so forth. And it's going to help the industry grow. And that that's going to be very important. And as you talked about, Ricardo, too, of of kind of like, you know, providing or you need that expertise, right? in the in the in the you need the expertise in the field you know and so taking this course uh taking you know additional information to learn and be active of talking with you guys you know maybe attend like a tournament an event see how it runs you know be present i think it's going to be be very key and before we kind of wrap up here i just have one final question and obviously both of you are, are free to answer that as well and, and what tips do you have, you know, for those, you know, students, young professionals looking to get a career in sports? Maybe we one day, you know, work with rugby, wheel, wheelchair rugby or, 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 or to, to essentially get involved in the sport industry. What tips do both of you have, have for them? <laughs> Ricardo, you want to you wanna start? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, sure. Uh, okay, I think first thing, education. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, there is not no other way uh, than education. You have to study, you have to to find good institutions, you have to find good courses, you know, uh, of course, to gather information, to, to gather uh all stuff you need to, to improve your area, whatever the area it is. Right. So I think this is the very first step you have to take. <laughs> and of course, uh, talking about spinal, uh, spinal cord injury and talking about wheelchair rugby, you can, uh, you can, you can look for us, you know? <laughs> You can yeah. start to watch like wheelchair rugby uh, matches uh, in Brazil. You can yeah. you can talk to us, Brazilian Wheelchair Rugby Association. You are very welcome. And I think um, the most important thing is education, I guess. Yeah. All oh, right, makes makes a lot of sense. What about you, Jose? Any anything you want to add? Oh, uh, Ricardo told everything. I think if you want something, we need to study and we need to have education. And uh, Paralympic sports and wheelchair rugby is uh, uh, a big space for every guy who wants to, to stay with, with us with the Paralympic sports because have too much sports. And if you start studying and learning more and more and more, uh, you you will be a, a good professional or, or a good fan or a good everything you want to do because uh, we have we have a, a a new a new vision about disability people and and mm -hmm. Paralympic sports and yeah. grow up 
every every year here in Brazil and in the world. And I think it's a, a big opportunity for, for everybody. Yeah, no, 100%, 100%. You know, at the end of the day, you know, if you're going to be involved in the wheelchair rugby space, you know, you got to learn how it works, you know, so it's it starts start with the education like it's it's a good way to wrap up wrap up this podcast uh and, and with that you know ricardo and i say you know i would like to thank you know both of you for for taking the time for sharing your insights uh your journey a little bit about what you guys are working on and some of the challenges of course you guys are facing so thanks again uh both of you for for taking the time and for being part of the podcast it's a pleasure. I'm very happy to, to be here and, you know, uh, I think uh, we can do a great job together. So it's the best for the wheelchair rugby. Absolutely. Yes, thank you for the invitation and thank you for the partnership. Uh, we have a one, now we have a, one course in Sporting Global, but in the Next month we have another course and uh, follow us in our social media, then in our Spotting Global Media too. And uh, we have some spots uh, to work with us in the next month too. And a new challenge for the new professionals and uh, stay with us and thank you all for the invitation and everything and see you then the next time <laughs> absolutely yeah so you heard it here you know of course take the course of sporting global academy check that out of course a new course is coming as well and then for any new opportunities that wheelchair rugby association is gonna post they will post it on sportingglobal.com so make sure to create an account if you haven't already you know stay active be learning about what's happening there and to both of you guys we before we wrap up i have uh, it's like a sporting global podcast tradition you know that we do here with every guest so i have to i have to teach you both a little bit of norwegian before we end <laughs> that's that's just the one thing we do <laughs> so with every video we do we always finish with vi snakkes which means see you later in Norwegian. So that's what you have to say. Repeat, repeat please, the, the word. Vi snakkes. Vi snakkes. There you go. Vi <laughs> snakkes. There you go. Thank you, Ricardo. Thank you, Jose. Thank you once again. And uh, great, great partnership. And looking forward to see what we can do more in the future. Thank, thank you once again. See you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.